So what's the problem with vaping? We know that e-cigarettes might play a role in helping smokers to quit, but we also know that they cause certain harms, and although those harms may be less than the harms of cigarettes, they're not harmless. Also, we know nothing about their long-term effects, and that's why the growing popularity of vaping has a lot of people worried. So, let's get into it. In addition to concerns about the unknown long-term effects of vaping, there are some very specific scenarios where recreational vaping causes disproportionate harm. For example, when people who were previous smokers start vaping nicotine e-cigarettes, it reinitiates their nicotine addiction, and that could be a pathway for them to start smoking tobacco cigarettes again. And for people who are active smokers, there are a lot of circumstances where, due to the location they're in, or the smell of that smoke, or even just the stigma of smoking, they can't smoke, but they can vape. And what that does is it maintains and reinforces their nicotine addiction, which could ultimately make it harder for them to quit down the road. And even if you use e-cigarettes to help you quit, studies suggest that you are less likely to eventually break your addiction to the nicotine itself compared to if you had used, for example, the nicotine patch or gum. But the biggest concern is that vaping has become hugely popular among teenagers. And that's a problem on a lot of different levels. The biggest is that e-cigarettes might act as a so-called gateway to tobacco cigarettes. They create that nicotine addiction in young people and it's possible that many of those kids will then eventually graduate to tobacco cigarettes. And some studies have shown that this does happen in a proportion of adolescents who experiment with vaping. We also know that teenagers are especially susceptible to nicotine because it interferes with teenage brain development and they can develop nicotine addiction within just a few weeks of exposure. On top of this, e-cigarette companies specifically developed fruit and candy flavored e-cigarettes and marketed those on social media, basically targeting that younger demographic. The result was that millions of teenagers across North America started vaping. Now, many parts of North America have put in measures to control this, like a higher minimum age for purchasing e-cigarettes, restrictions on which flavors can be sold and how they're advertised, and even taxes on e-cigarettes. And in the last few years, also partly because kids were stuck at home due to the pandemic, we have seen a drop off in teen vaping. Despite that though, there were still more than 2 million middle school and high school kids in the US who reported vaping in 2021. So it's still a massive number. Now, it's important to acknowledge that e-cigarettes may help existing smokers to quit, which could mean real harm reduction. But at the same time, we can't ignore the fact that recreational vaping may introduce an entirely new generation of people to nicotine addiction and to the possible harms of e-cigarettes. So how do we balance our desire to reduce harm in smokers without creating harm in non-smokers and especially in kids? For now, while we wait for long-term research, the best compromise might just be to regulate e-cigarettes in such a way that they're readily available to people who want to quit smoking, but not available to just anyone, and especially to susceptible teenagers. I know a lot of people have strong views on this, so leave a comment below and start a conversation. For more health and science info, subscribe to the feed.